through our previous two videos where we reviewed the performance of Ox Special Fund Q2 and Manza X Special Fund Q2, giving us a summation of performance in the half year 2025, we did receive a question from one of our subscribers that is a one Victor Otieno. And I quote, Kindly compare Oak and Manza from the beginning of 2025 up to June 30th, 2025. Use initial investment of 1 million. I want to see the difference in compounding quarterly and monthly. In answering this question, we are using these five schedules of analysis and we shall bring out first comparing what would be the performance look like if these two funds were compounding quarterly. Then we shall look at another schedule of OCK funds and compounding on a monthly basis. Because we have to bring out what would be the difference or incremental return from OCK because of the monthly compounding aspect. Because we can still say that uh, OCK fund has an element of quarterly compounding and monthly compounding. And to bring out that we have to equate the two funds on compounding on a quarterly basis, then look at significantly what is that extra margin of uh, return out of the monthly compounding. And all that will come after three seconds, a short break, so don't go away. In the meantime, give us a like to the video, engage in the comment section, and don't forget to share the video to another person. If you're looking forward to investing in either of the two funds, then reach us via WhatsApp through this number. See you after three seconds, short break. Welcome back. And in our first schedule, we are looking at the compounding under Manza X Special Fund. We are sticking to initial investment of 1 million at 1st January 2025. So with this schedule, the Manza X Special Fund delivered a quarterly re average return of 4.89 in March 2025. That was the Q1. And if you subject that return rate to the initial amount of investment of 1 million, you are getting a return of 48,900 shillings. That 48,900 return is added to the initial balance of 1 million to get us a new balance at the end of the first quarter. That is 1,048,900 shillings now reinvested in, in total in quarter two. That is beginning 1st April. 1,048,900 is what is reinvested for Q2. Then in Q2, which is supposed to end in June 30th, the fund average return was 6.05%. You subject that rate to the capital invested in Q2, which was the closing balance of Q1. And that was the 1048,900, which now gives us a Q2 return of 63,458,000. And 45 cents. That Q2 return will now be added to the balance at the opening of Q2. That was 1048,900 to give us the closing balance of Q2 of 1,112,358 shillings and 45 cents. That is the closing balance for Q2. And the closing of Q2 marks the closing of H1, half year one, because the year 12 months, six months are first half, the other six months starting July, that gives us H2, second half. For us to be fair in the comparison, and in order for us to identify the incremental return out of the monthly compounding, because it's a lower frequency compounding giving us a higher number of compounding times, then we are first to look at a schedule that calculates or compounds hawk return on a quarterly basis that can now equate to the quarterly compounding of Manza so that we first see 
the expanded difference in that compound. And this schedule gives us a quarterly compound of, or gives us what would be the quarterly compounding of OCK fund. And for the same amount of capital that is 1 million invested at the beginning of Q1, which is 1st January 2025, this fund delivered average quarter return in Q1, which ended in March 2025, of 4.66%. Subject that rate to the object, that is the capital at the opening of the Q1, that is 1 million, you are getting a total return of 46,600 shillings. The closing balance for Q1, you get the initial capital of 1 million, add the Q1 return. So you get 1,046,600 shillings. The closing balance for one period becomes the opening balance for the next period. The balance carried down in one period becomes the balance brought down for the second period. And that is now Q2. We are using, the, we are investing the capital, which was the closing balance for Q1, which is 1,046,600. And the Q2, Oak Fund delivered a return of 4.88%. And subjecting that rate to the capital invested in Q2, you are getting a total return of 51,000. 74 shillings and 8 cents. The closing balance in Q2 will be the opening balance Q2 plus the total interest for the period and therefore we are taking the 1,046,600 add to that balance the interest of 51 or the return of 51,074 shillings and 8 cents to get a closing balance for Q2 as 1,000,000 97,674 shillings and 8 cents. So our Q2 closing balance of 1097,674.08 gives us the closing balance for H1 for OCK fund. Those two schedules, we have compared what would be quarterly compounding for the two funds. We will take with us those balances to our third schedule. We are in our third schedule. We are now looking at the monthly compounding of OCK fund because the difference between the monthly compounding OCK fund and the quarterly compounding of OCK fund, that will be the incremental return due to the monthly compounding. We will get the result of the monthly compounding of OCK fund and what we have calculated of what would be the result for OCK fund if it were compounding on a quarterly basis to get the incremental element in that return because of the added frequency in compounding on a monthly basis. And therefore, with this schedule, in January, the same capital amount of 1 million in the month of January, OCK fund generated a return to investors of 1.60%. Subject to that rate to the capital at the beginning of the month that was 1 million, you get a return of 16,000 shillings. Had that to the original capital for in January, you are getting 1,016,000 shillings. A period in OCK fund is 30 days, amounting to a month. Therefore, the closing balance of the month becomes the opening balance of the next month. So in February, we are not now calculating based on 1 million, which was the initial investment. We are recalculating using the new capital at the beginning of the month because the amount has also been reinvested, both the original capital and the interest. And therefore, the February return of 1.76, we subject it to what would be the company, the company capital for the month, and we are getting 17,881 shillings and 60 cents, making the or bringing the closing balance to 1,033,881.60. In March, the end of quarter one, the fund generated 1.30% as to investor, 1.30% as the return, 
and subjected to that capital you are getting a return of 13,440.46 bringing the closing balance in the month of March to 1 million 47,322 shillings and 6 cents then in April with a return of 1.66% Subject to the balance of uh, 1047322.06, you are getting a monthly return of 17,385.55, bringing the balance at the end of April to 1,064,707 shillings and 61 cents. May 1.53% return, giving us a total uh, return of 16,290 and three cents that bringing the balance for may to one million eight thousand nine hundred and ninety seven shillings and sixty three cents in june which is the last month for the second quarter in consideration the the fund delivered to investors a 1.69 percent which gave us eighteen thousand two hundred and sixty eight and eighty six cents bringing the closing balance for q2 to one million ninety nine thousand two hundred and sixty six shillings and forty nine cents getting the figure that was reported through the fact sheet of one million one hundred and seven thousand one hundred and sixty three point two one got the adjustment of seven thousand eight hundred and ninety six point seven two note that in reporting for special funds majorly every value will be given as an average possibility is that the calculation that we have used because these are ab uh, average values that have been extracted then the actual values that could be reading in the investor statement would potentially be different a person who invested in january 1st and another one who invested the same million on 15th january in the same fund the one who invested in 15th January can also get a higher balance compared to the person who invested in 1st January. A person who diversified and invested a million in Manza and another person investing a million in, uh, in Hawk, potentially out of that they would get a different amount, but there could be a bigger variation than our comparison. Manza delivered a higher return, absolutely, compared to Oak Fund. A person who invested in Manza a million and another one who invested in Hawk a million, it's very easy to find the one in Hawk having a higher balance than the one in Manza because there are several factors that determine the return and the balance in your account and those who are, we call them account activities and, and fund illusion we should be looking at in another video to complete the analysis on compounding monthly and quarterly then now we get to this schedule which we are digesting the difference in the return from the two funds to identify specifically where the amount that came through monthly compounding to bridge the gap between what we identified as the quarterly compounding of the two funds. Through the schedule, Manza X Special Fund H1 2025, which is now the summation of uh, accumulation of all those returns and the balances in Q1 and Q2, we got a value of 1,112,358.50. Hawk fund when we compounded on a quarterly basis to compare the two funds equally on compounding quarterly we got a value of 1 million 97,674 shillings and 8 cents so at that level we would say that Manza X fund performed higher compared with the Hawk fund on quarterly compounding basis it is also a factor that overall Manza X fund performed better compared to Oak fund because Manza delivered an actual H1 return 
combining Q1 and Q2 of 10.94%, when Oxfam delivered a H1 combined return of a Q1 and Q2 of 9.5%. So by percentage return, overall, Manza performed better than Hawk Fund. With this schedule then, Q, the quarterly compounding comparison as per the schedule, will leave us with a difference in performance of 14,684 shillings point, um, 684 shillings and 37 cents is the difference of performance where Manza X delivered higher than Hawk Fund in quarterly compounding by 14,684 shillings and 37 shillings. That means that Mansa, if these two funds were compounding on a month, on quarterly basis, then that is the value by which Mansa would have uh, as delivered compare higher compared to Hawk Fund. But the fact is that Hawk Fund compounds on a monthly basis, and the value that it delivered was higher than that. And therefore, this difference, the monthly compounding that we have identified through the schedule of uh, monthly compounding of OCK, and this schedule that compounds on a quarterly basis, there is a difference of 9,489 shillings and 13 cents. If you deduct that one from the 14,000, which is the quarterly difference, you get a net difference of 5,195 shillings and 24 cents. So it means that though Manza X performed better in term in return, percentage return, compared to Hawk Fund, when you look at the 10.94% in H1 and comparing with the Hawk's 9.54 in H1, Hawk Fund, through its monthly compounding, they, uh, bridged the gap by a delivery of a 9,489 shillings and 13 cents in monthly computing. That was the extra that this investor of a million in Oak Fund got, which bridged the difference Friends, in a million invested in Manza X, which would have given a difference of 14, uh, 14,684 and 37 cents. That was bridged by 9,489 and 13 cents and the net left at 5,195 shillings and 24 cents. And for control purpose at the bottom of the, of the schedule, we have now the totals. What was delivered as per the report uh, through Mansa of 1,112,358 shillings. 45 cents and OCK funds actual of 1,107,163 uh, shillings and 21 cents, leaving us with a net difference that we have identified above of 5,195 shillings and 24 cents. That is how a higher frequency in compounding uh, accelerates return when compared to a lower frequency. And in frequency, we are talking of the number of times interest is calculated, added to your capital and reinvested. The higher the frequency in compounding, the higher the potential in delivery of a return. And that in interpretation would mean that then if these two funds delivered exactly the same return, 10%, 10%, 21%, 21%. then the one that has a higher frequency would deliver generally a higher balance to the investor. If you're looking forward to investing in either of these two funds, reach us through this WhatsApp number and we'll be glad to be of service to you in creating your account and starting off your special fund investment. Thank you for watching and see you in our next video.